at the palace of King Hildebrand. Here, at a pavilion attached to the palace, a crowd of courtiers and soldiers are gathered. They are armed with telescopes and opera glasses. Under the leadership of Florian, a friend of Hilarion, the king's son, they anxiously scan the far horizon. fail to put in an appearance at our court before the sun has set in yonder west and fail to bring the princess Ida here to whom our son Hilarion was betrothed at the extremely early age of one. There's war between King Gama and ourselves. Oh, Cyril, how I dread this interview. It's twenty years since he and I have met. He was a twisted monster, all awry as though Dame Nature, angry with her work, had crumpled it in fitful petulance. But, sir, a twisted and ungainly trunk often bears goodly fruit. Perhaps he was a kind, well-spoken gentleman. Oh, no. For adder-like, his sting lay in his tongue. His sting is present, though his tongue is past. But stay, my liege. O'er yonder mountain's brow comes a small body bearing Gama's arms. And now I look more closely at it, sir, I see attached to it King Gama's legs, from which I gather this corollary, that that small body must be Gama's own. Ah, is the princess with him? Well, my liege, unless her highness is full six feet high, and wears mustachios too, and smokes cigars, and rides en cavalier in coat of steel, I do not think she is. One never knows. She's a strange girl, I've heard, and does odd things. Come, bustle there, for Gama placed the richest robes we own. For Gama, 
place the coarsest prison dress. For Gama, let our best spare bed be aired. For Gama, let our deepest dungeon yawn. For Gama, lay the costliest banquet out. For Gama, place cold water and dry bread. For as King Gama brings the princess here, or brings her not, so shall King Gama have much more than everything, much less than nothing. Now hearken to my strict command on every hand, on every hand. Strict command on every hand, we just hold it down. Gamma, bring the princess here. Give him good cheer. Give him good cheer. If she come here, we'll give him a cheer, and we will show you how. Hit him around, hit him around, hit him around, but up, but up. It's not the king of this, the king of this dog to do a job. It's not the heart, hit him around. Upon our oath, we'll trounce them both. We'll trounce them both upon his oath, as sure as what today. We'll shut him up in a dungeon cell and toll his bell on a funeral bell. From dungeon cell, his funeral bell, to sight him with his pain. Hip him around, hip him around, hip him around, hip him around, hip him around. As up we stake the faith, we're sticking the old familiar way. We'll shut him up. We are leaving the court for a moment, and as we turn away, there, further along the terrace, is Hilarion, quite alone, leaning on the stone balustrade, lost in thought. Since twenty years 
Father, is there news for me at last? King Garmar is in sight, but much I fear with no princess. Alas, my liege, I've heard that Princess Ida has forsworn the world and with a band of women shut herself within a lonely country house and there devotes herself to stern philosophies. Then I should say the loss of such a wife is one to which a reasonable man would easily be reconciled. Oh, no, or I am not a reasonable man. She is my wife, has been for 20 years. I think I see her now. Ah, let me look. In my mind's eye, I mean. A blushing bride, all bib and tucker, frill and fur below. How exquisite she looked as she was born recumbent in her foster mother's arms. How the bride wept, nor would be comforted until the hireling mother for the nonce administered refreshment in the vestry. And I remember feeling much annoyed that she should weep at marrying with me. But then I thought, these brides are all alike. You cry at marrying me. How much more cause you'd have to cry if it were broken off. These were my thoughts. I kept them to myself. For at that age, I had not learnt to speak.
you give me your attention, I will tell you what I am. I'm a genuine philanthropist or other kinds of sham. Each little fault of temper and each social defect in my erring fellow creatures I endeavor to correct. To all the little weaknesses I open people's eyes and little plans to snub the self-sufficient I devise. I love my fellow creatures, I do all the good I can. Yet everybody says I'm such a disagreeable man and I can't think why. Compliments inflated, I a withering reply. And vanity, I almost do my best to mortify. A charitable action I can skillfully dissect. And interested motives I'm delighted to detect. I know everybody's income and what everybody earns. And I carefully compare it with the income tax returns. But the benefit humanity, however much I plan. Yet everybody says I'm such a disagreeable man. And I can't think why. I'm sure I'm no ascetic. I'm as pleasant as to be. You'll always find me ready with a crushing repartee. I'm an irritating chuckle. I'm a celebrated sneer. I'm an entertaining stinger. I'm a fascinating leer. To everybody's prejudice, I know a thing or two. I can tell a woman's age in half a minute, and I do. But although I try to make myself as pleasant as I can, yet everybody says I am a disagreeable man, and I can't think why. He can't think why. So this is Castle Hildebrand. Well, well. Dame Rumour whispered that the place was grand. She told me that your taste was exquisite, superb, unparalleled. Oh, really, King? But she's a liar. Why, how old you've grown. Is this Hilarion? Why, you've changed too. You were a singularly handsome child. Are you a courtier? Come then, ply your trade. Tell me some lies. How do you like your king? Vile rumour says he's all but imbecile. Now, that's not true. My lord, we love our king. His wise remarks are valued by his court as precious stones. And for the self-same cause. Like precious stones, his sensible remarks derive their value from their scarcity. Come now, be honest. Tell the truth for once. Tell it of me. Come, come, I'll harm you not. This leg is crooked. This foot is ill-designed. This shoulder wears a hump. Come out with it. Look, here's my face. Now, am I not the worst of nature's blunders? Nature never errs. To those who know the workings of your mind, your face and figure, sir, suggest a book appropriately bound. Why, hark ye, sir, how dare you bandy words with me? Well, no need to bandy aught that appertains to you. Do you permit this, King? We are in doubt whether to treat you as an honoured guest or as a traitor knave who plights his word and breaks it. If the casting votes with me, I give it for the form. We shall see. By the terms of our contract signed and sealed, you are bound to bring the princess here today. Why is she not with you? Answer me this. What think you of a wealthy, purse-proud man who, when he calls upon a starving friend, pulls out his gold and flourishes his notes and flashes diamonds in the pauper's eyes? What name have you for such a one? A snob. Just so. The girl has beauty, Virtue, wit, grace, humour, wisdom, charity, and pluck. Would it be kindly, think you, to parade these brilliant qualities before your eyes? Oh, no, King Hildebrand, I am no snob. Stop that tongue or you shall lose the monkey head that holds it. Oh, bravo! Your king deprives me of my head that he and I may meet on equal terms. Where is she now? In Castle Adamant, one of my many country houses. There she rules a woman's university with full a hundred girls who learn of her. A hundred girls? A hundred ecstasies? But no mere girls, my good young gentleman. 
With all the college learning that you boast, the youngest there will prove a match for you. With all my heart, if she's the prettiest. Fancy. A hundred matches all alike. That's if I strike them as I hope to do. Despair your hope. Their hearts are dead to men. He who desires to gain their favour must be qualified to strike their teeming brains and not their hearts. They're safety matches, sir, and they light only on the knowledge box, so you've no chance. Are there no males whatever in those walls? None, gentlemen, except the letter males, and they are driven, as males often are in other large communities, by women. Why, bless my heart, she's so particular she'll scarcely suffer Dr. Watts's hymns, and all the animals she owns are hers. The ladies rise at cockcrow every morning. Ah, then they have male poultry. Not at all. The crowing's done by an accomplished hen. Perhaps if you address the lady most politely, most politely, flatter and impress the lady most politely, most politely, humbly beg and humbly sue, she may deign to look on you. What you're doing, you must do. Most politely, most politely, most politely. From the bed and from the stool, she began to look on you. What you're doing, you must do. Most politely, most politely, most The lady most politely, most politely, if she don't, we'll storm the lady most politely, most politely. You'll remain as hostage here, should Hilarion disappear, we will hang you, never fear. Most politely, most politely, most politely. You'll remain as hostage here, should Hilarion disappear, we will hang you. is playing tomorrow morn when I do will engage but we will use no force our love to gain nature nature has armed us for the Glances shall be our lances, and pops of silvery, our light artillery. We'll storm their bowers with scented showers, the fairest flowers that we can buy. Is fading with serenading and such frivolity will prove a quality, a sweet profusion of soft illusion. This bold intrusion shall justify. This bold intrusion shall justify. Charm their senses with verbal fences, with ballads amatory and declamatory, little heeding their pretty pleading. A love exceeding will justify. A love exceeding will justify.
lose himself be thrust. You must. This seems unnecessarily severe. Yeah, yeah. All about to dwell in a dungeon cell, going in and twisting in a solitary prison is a poor lookout for a soldier stout who is longing for the rattle of a complicated battle. Yes, he's longing for the rattle of a complicated battle. For the rat tap tap of the village and the gun and the guns they go boom boom. The rat tap tap of the village and the gun and the guns they go boom boom. He's longing for the rattle of a complicated battle. With the just conditions of our requisitions, you may go in haste and indulge your taste for the fascinating battle of the complicated battle. Is the fascinating battle of the complicated battle? The drum, drum, drum of the military drum and the drum that go boom boom. The drum, drum, drum of the military drum, 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 dr